Good morning once again, Shaw viewers. Uh, Mayor Ken here with you again today, and it's uh, just a pleasure to be on board and answer some questions today uh, around the downtown and other issues that are percolating in the great city of Red Deer. E-scooters are going to be a part of Red Deer's landscape. Where the only thing we're hoping for, frankly, right now is we can get them on the streets in the middle of March. That's when they're scheduled to roll out. Uh, but of course, Mother Nature will dictate uh, what the uh, e-scooter season will look like. It's still a pilot project for the second year and council read first reading on a bylaw that will tweak uh, a little bit of some of the traffic uh, concerns around e-scooters but overwhelmingly our community reacted in such a positive way to e-scooters our ridership was so great uh, the number of of miles traveled on e-scooters the way it was embraced the safety aspect of it and so on uh, e-scooters are going to be a part of red deer's landscape e-scooters are coming Paid parking is a question that we get uh, asked from time to time as to whether it's relevant uh, or not. And it's all about a balance really between the local businesses and their ability to attract and retain customers around their proximity. And what's fair, you know, really what, it, what, really, what is the balance between a parking visit for a doctor's appointment, a hospital visit, a, a shopping experience, uh, and then should you go on to the next stall. So it's all about a balance. So there is a future for paid parking. It, it continues to be an issue that, uh, that council looks like, or looks at, sorry, and administration looks at, uh, and the challenge is to find that balance. But we're going to incentivize it again this year with 200 plus stalls uh, and still retain the balance of paid and unpaid parking. Cultural events, music events, celebratory events, those are ways of attracting people into your downtown and you know often we speak of changing the downtown narrative which is part of our council's strategic plan now as we go forward and really downtown if we can envision it downtown has the potential to be our cultural center our historical center and our center of celebration so that really is the opportunity i think that we'll look at in bringing more traffic into the downtown, more activities into the downtown, and, and more really life into the downtown. My favorite part of the downtown really is the historical part of it. The brick buildings, the sandstone buildings, the ghost statues. You know, the, the ability be, to be able to appreciate that a particular building has been here for a hundred years or so, still maintains that charm, for example. You don't find that in any other part of Red Deer. So really, again, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about when we talk about the narrative of downtown. A part of that narrative has to be the historical context of downtown, has to be the cultural context of downtown, and it has to be that place where people can say, I can't experience this kind of charm, this, this kind of vibrance in any other part of the city. I think if we're able to accomplish that, we're going to have an identity downtown that people are going to not only appreciate, but come and be drawn to. Favorite event for me, you know, it's, it's hard to beat the farmer's market. Uh, it's, it's certainly hard to beat the Ross Street patio on a, on a summer evening, uh, without a doubt. You know, that, that, that's always a terrific attraction. On a personal note, uh, I'll, I'll say this, I'm looking so much forward uh, to celebrating the mayor and council's uh, a garden party uh, in June uh, for the first time. I'm, I'm sure COVID will allow us to be able to do that. Uh, and that's always such a great uh, hit with so many of our citizens, the ability to come down to City Hall Park. That would be the summertime event. If I was to pick one in the wintertime, it certainly would be the City Hall uh, lights, uh, our, our park lights, uh, the way we light the night for those six weeks during the year. And now we've brought the patio uh, back into the downtown. And the broader vision really on the winter time is, is really imagining what we can do in the downtown in the winter time. I think we've only scratched the surface. Obviously climate is going to dictate that, but I think we have opportunities to celebrate the downtown in the winter time as well. Back in um, uh, 2016, when I heard about uh, the mortality rates for, um, uh, for cardiac episodes in central Alberta, uh, at that time, our doctors group uh, published a paper, published a research paper that indicated you were 50% more likely uh, to die of a cardiac episode uh, in central Alberta than any other location in the province. So that spurred myself and the current mayor, Mayor Veer, and our council uh, to really get involved uh, on an advocacy position as it relates to the hospital. And then unfortunately, 
Uh, my wife uh, took a heart attack um, not long after, actually, that that article was uh, produced. Um, it was a very serious attack, and um, she she survived for three months uh, in the intensive care unit, uh, ultimately dying in, in March of 2017. And those three months uh, that we were able to spend together uh, at the hospital really brought me into uh, close contact with many of the doctors, many of the uh, many of the ICU staff, uh, many specialists, uh, respirologists, um, physiotherapists, and I really got a very personal grounding in the challenges of the hospital. Every day, well certainly every second day, the hospital announced uh, an overcapacity protocol, and that was 2017. So you can imagine it's five years later, we've gone through two years of COVID, and, and, and what that hospital has endured uh, over the last two years. So I have a personal story in the hospital, but you know, I have learned as well that there are hundreds more stories like mine that, uh, that have occurred in that hospital over the last 10 years. And the great news again is that those stories now will come to an end or they'll certainly diminish. It's our fourth busiest hospital in the entire province, and it's our busiest hospital. Uh, when it comes to referrals. It's continually running over capacity. So we have an opportunity now to expand that, to provide equity, fairness in healthcare for Central Albertans, for, for Redarians. And uh, you know, when you think about the impact of that investment on the next six or seven years uh, in Red Deer proper and in Central Alberta, it's gonna have an enormous impact in healthcare and, and an equally or greater uh, impact uh, on the economic development uh, prospects for Central Alberta. An incredible opportunity and the result of so much hard work by our frontline people, our medical people, and all the surrounding counties, towns, villages, the city of Red Deer, uh, our council, our doctors, a collective voice. So nice to be recognized by Alberta Health Services and the provincial government. I think everybody came away uh, with a great sense of appreciation and gratitude yesterday, and everybody won yesterday uh, with that announcement. What is your hobby? Well, gosh, guitar playing for sure, although I'm not much of a guitarist, frankly, but, uh, but I tinkle on it, let's put it that way. Uh, I read a lot, a lot, and uh, uh, I garden in the, uh, in the summertime. I like to fish uh, as well. I love the outdoors, uh, frankly, and uh, you know certainly I'm excited. 2022 uh, summertime, springtime uh, is the year of the garden uh, in uh, Red Deer in our great city. I'm hoping people embrace the opportunity to garden. We're going to have a fantastic event uh, over in Capstone, a, a, a major expansion to our community gardens, a fantastic opportunity for people to get involved, produce their own food, Help their um, help their fellow citizens as it re relates to food security. Uh, so, you know, it's it's a it's an exciting time for, you know, shall I say, pardon the pun, a seasoned gardener uh, like me uh, coming into 2022. What is your favorite animal? The cat, of course. Uh, I, I'm a cat person. Uh, unabashedly, uh, they, they are, uh, as far as I'm concerned, mysterious and wonderful and, and, and all those kinds of things. No offense to the great uh, dog people that are out there. Uh, my son is one of them. Um, but uh, for me, it's all about the cat. And uh, so I say here's to all the cats out there. A special type of cat or dog for that matter uh, would be any found at a rescue agency or, or your SPCA or whatever. And I would say, you know, it's nice to have a breed, uh, you know, of cat or dog or, you know, as the case may be. But, you know, if you're going to really, you know, sort of address the greatest benefit, uh, go down to your SPCA, go down to your, your Whiskers Rescue uh, and so on. And, uh, and get a pet really uh, that's really looking for that home. Well, it's always been a pleasure uh, to be with you uh, once again today. I hope you had a little insight on our downtown. I'm encouraging all of you to come downtown and visit some of the wonderful, unique places, our art galleries, our coffee shops, and our restaurants. Come on downtown, folks. Changing the narrative of downtown is within your power to do so. And until next time, 
This is Mayor Ken Johnson. Have a great day.